Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be covering a very hot, popular topic in skincare and that is all about fragrance. So I'm going to be going over why manufacturers include fragrance in their formulas, um, what fragrance really is and why it can be so irritating and sensitizing, and then I am going to touch on essential oils as well. So if you're curious to learn more about fragrance in your skincare, then just keep watching. Okay, so let's just dive right into fragrance. So why do manufacturers include fragrance in a formulation? Well, there is really strong ties between our sen sense of smell and memory. So for example, when you are brushing your teeth and your toothpaste has that minty, fresh scent and cooling sensation on your mouth, you associate that with clean teeth and a cleansing action on the teeth and your mouth feels nice and fresh and minty after. And so for us, we associate that with, you know, having a clean mouth, having clean teeth, and it feels good. Same thing for, you know, if I've got a cleanser that smells like, I'm just going to throw this out there, like grapefruit, for example, and I use that every single morning and, you know, I'm used to that scent and I think it wakes me up. And so I associate this pleasant scent with some type of action like cleansing or moisturizing or whatever it is. And it really creates an experience for the consumer. And this is really important because often that's a big part of why people go back to a certain skincare product um, because they really like that whole experience of application and using that product. Another reason why manufacturers might include fragrance is to kind of disguise and mask some unpleasant smells that could be in the formulation. Um, there's a lot of different ingredients and chemicals that don't have the nicest smell. Like for example, if you've ever smelt the CeraVe cleanser, I don't think that anyone would say that it smells good, um, but it is fragrance free. So you really are just smelling the formulation. A lot of companies try and mask and hide that more unpleasant smell so that the consumer has a nice experience while using the product. Another reason why a manufacturer might include fragrance is to differentiate products. So if I've got a body lotion and then I put it out in five different scents, well, that is going to kind of diversify my line without creating a new product and each scent will appeal to a different target market. So I've all of a sudden just expanded my customer base and expanded my product line by just simply changing the scent. So it is also a marketing and sales strategy as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to dive into why fragrance is not regarded as something that should be in skincare at all and why a lot of brands and companies and manufacturers are going fragrance free, why a lot of consumers are going fragrance free and kind of just what's up with that. So fragrance or perfume as a skincare ingredient does not have to list and disclose the actual components of that ingredient because it's considered a proprietary or trade secret raw material from whatever manufacturer is making that fragrance. So fragrance or perfume can actually be composed of hundreds, sometimes thousands of different compounds to actually make up that scent. And generally it's composed of actual volatile compounds that do make up the scent, the fragrance. Uh, it'll include solvents, carriers, fixatives, preservatives, antioxidants sometimes, and then also masking ingredients. So masking ingredients, essentially they're used to kind of hide what that chemical makeup is of the perfume. So if I was a manufacturer trying to reverse engineer someone else's fragrance, when I run that on a mass spec to analyze it, I'm not going to be able to tell what compounds are actually present because they've also put in masking compounds that have the same chemical profile and will hide whatever is in there. So it's kind of like just securing your formulation by making sure no one can reverse engineer and replicate it. And that's why fragrance and perfume can be really, really complex. So the fact that we don't know what makes up that ingredient, there's a lot of opportunity for people to be sensitive, have allergies, or just yeah, have some type of reaction on the skin. And often these ingredients, such as the volatile compounds that actually make up the fragrance, those can be sensitizing and irritating. The solvents can be sensitizing and irritating. The fixatives, the masking agents, all of those components individually could be irritating on the skin. And then you've just thrown them into this big 
complex and put them in a formulation. So there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of unknown for people to react poorly to fragrance. In the EU, they actually do have to list known allergens that could be present in the fragrance. So things like linalool, limonene, citronellol, cinnamol, and the list goes on. So if you ever do see those compounds at the end of an ingredients list, it's because they are present in the aroma or perfume and they have to be disclosed because they're known allergens. All right, let's just touch on essential oils really quick. I'm really just going to be talking about essential oils as fragrance components in skincare. Um, I am gonna do a whole essential oil series, so that will be coming later, but I'm just gonna kind of talk about some things that can go right and wrong with essential oils in skincare products to fragrance or provide some aroma. So it is common knowledge that a lot of people have sensitivities to essential oils. Um, when I was studying aromatherapy, this is very heavily, you know, taught and kind of drilled into your brain that whenever you're working with a new client and a new oil, you have to do a test patch. So essentially, you would make a 1% dilution of this oil in a carrier oil, apply it to the inner wrist and to the neck, wait 24 to 48 hours and see if there is any reaction. And you do that before you start using any essential oils in an aromatherapy regime. So this is very well known and aromatherapists and people that work with essential oils absolutely do know this. There are a lot of essential oils that tend to be a lot more allergenic than others. For example, lavender, the citrus oils, a lot of the herb oils, so things like mint, basil, rosemary, sage, a lot of those tend to be used quite heavily in skincare products and tend to be the most allergenic. Some of the least allergenic essential oils would be those heavier uh, resins such as frankincense, myrrh, patchouli, amberwood. So there's a big difference between different kinds of essential oils, but of course everybody is different. Everyone could have a different reaction. That's why if you do use any products with essential oils, it is so important to do a test patch first. Another thing that can go on with essential oils is adulteration. So essential oils are extremely high value compounds and raw materials and it takes a lot of plant material to produce a very small amount of essential oils. And what this does for the supply and demand kind of aspect of raw material sourcing of essential oils is there's often a higher demand than the actual supply of that oil. So what manufacturers are forced to do or they feel forced to do is to actually cut that pure essential oil with something else to stretch it and make it go farther. Now often those other ingredients that are used to cut and stretch essential oils are not disclosed and these are sold as 100% pure essential oils. So this is a huge issue because now you have something that says it is a pure essential oil but it is cut with you know one to a hundred different compounds to make that ingredient go further. Now with the rise in popularity of essential oils and aromatherapy this is just happening more and more and more. Every month and every year there's so many more adulteration reports that come out that is just happening all across the board. Some really heavily adulterated oils are lavender, tea tree, rosemary, rose, patchouli, just kind of like the popular ones to be honest. Like yeah, the citrus ones are often adulterated as well. So orange, lime, lemon, grapefruit, these are very often adulterated as well. And that is a huge issue because all of a sudden you have no idea what makes up the chemical composition of that pure essential oil product because it's no longer pure. Something else that can happen with essential oils, and this is the biggest reason for developing a sensitivity over time. Essential oils are extremely prone to oxidation and over time they basically break down into their oxidation products or breakdown products um, because they're exposed to oxygen or UV radiation. And those breakdown products are often extremely, extremely sensitizing. So if I have a skincare product that has, just throwing this out there, it has lavender oil in it. And I've been using it for about six months. Now all of a sudden I start to develop a rash when I'm using this product. 
It could be because I'm just developing a sensitivity to lavender, but more often than not, it's because that lavender oil in my product has oxidized and is breaking down into extremely sensitizing ingredients. Some essential oils take a really long time to produce these breakdown products. So that would be the resins that I mentioned before, such as sandalwood, frankincense, amberwood, patchouli. You can have a bottle of patchouli for like 15 plus years and it actually just gets better over time. With citrus oils, even an unopened citrus oil bottle, that will only stay good for about a year until it's broken down into its oxidative products and that could be extremely sensitized when used on the skin. So in my skincare line, I definitely started out my line using a natural fragrance oil composed of amberwood, vanilla, and Hawaiian ginger. Now, over the two years of having my formulations out on the market, there was no issues related to sensitivity caused by these essential oils. And there's a reason why I chose these oils, because they have little to no ability to be sensitizing to, to people and they have a very slow oxidation rate so it'll take them years and years and years to go bad in the formula. But because you guys gave me a lot of feedback and your feedback is so important to me and I want to ensure that you guys are able to use my products if possible so I've actually removed fragrance out of the entire line and it is completely fragrance free at this point. The reason why I wanted to keep it in originally is because honestly it just smells so good and the feedback that I have from my consumers is that they love the scent and they love how it wakes them up in the morning and they love you know how it wears and just everything about the scent so that's why when I was originally relaunching the line I did keep it in but based on your feedback I think it's it is really important to be accommodating to those that have had issues with fragrance in the past so the Yaltilis beauty product line is now completely fragrance free thanks to you guys so I think that's awesome I think it's really cool that I do have a you know it is a small company and I have the ability to take your feedback and really make changes quickly so that we can just all be in this together and enjoy skincare products that we can all use. So some of you were asking me about fragrance for the body versus the face. Uh, the skin on your face is a lot thinner and it is a lot more sensitive. So a lot of people find they can use absolutely no fragrance on the face, but they can actually use it on their body. Again, I think that the biggest thing to just be wary of is if a product has fragrance in it just always do a patch test first apply a small amount to the inner wrist a little bit to the neck wait 24 to 48 hours see if you have any kind of reaction and then in addition if your products do contain essential oils just ensure that if they are uh, citrus oils or those more herbaceous oils such as lavender rosemary tea tree etc uh, that you're using the product up quickly because they just can break down and oxidize into those very, very sensitizing ingredients. I think while a lot of people do have issues with fragrance because they have sensitive skin or even if you don't have sensitive skin, um, there is a lot of people that will never have this issue in their life, will never struggle with fragrance, so everybody's just different and I think it's important to not bash either side. Like if someone likes to use a very heavily fragranced product, just let them do their thing. If you like to use fragrance free, then that's good for you. I think we don't need to have judgment on others for what kind of skincare products they're using and try and convince them that this is bad or that's bad or or whatever. I think it is really important though that if you do work in a public place or you're out in public, you're at the mall, you're on the bus, you're in public transit or whatever, just be very cautious of what kind of products that you're using that are fragranced because so many people are really sensitive. For example, if I get into an elevator with someone that's wearing perfume, I will immediately start sneezing and I'll be sneezing and stuffed up for the next like two hours. And that just kind of sucks, to be honest. So as more and more people find out and develop these sensitivities to fragrance, I think it is really important that we all play a role in just, you know, making sure that we're not too heavily perfumed when we go out in public and we're just respectful of people that are really sensitive to fragrance. So this was just kind of a general overview. If you guys do want me to get into some more like perfumery fragrance chemistry and really dive into the chemistry and kind of the inner workings of the perfume industry, which I am fascinated by because it is a billion dollar industry and has been for a long time. And I think it's very, very 
interesting. So I'd love to dive into that side more. I am absolutely going to dive into the essential oil side more and really go through all those different chemical classes that make up essential oils and which ones are more sensitizing versus less sensitizing, etc. So those videos are definitely going to come, but I thought it was important to make this kind of general overview on the role of fragrance in skincare and kind of some factors that play on how allergenic and how sensitizing ingredients and formulations can be. Especially since I just did my Lush review and I really didn't touch on the fragrance at all because I mean if you've ever walked into a Lush store you know it's heavily fragranced. If you are bothered by perfume and fragrance and essential oils that is just not a store for you. I mean you can smell it down the street when you're just walking by. So I mean if you are sensitive to perfume and fragrance you know the products to avoid I don't have to tell you that um, you know you've probably experienced a lot of different products that work and don't work so I just suggest doing if you are using a new product and you it has fragrance you're not sure just do a test patch and just be cautious on how quickly you're using up that product to reduce uh, the sensitivity sensitization that could develop over time from oxidation of those fragrance ingredients. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I am going to be doing those deeper dives that I mentioned, but if you have any more questions regarding perfume, fragrance, and essential oils, as always, just leave them down in the comments below. I do read every single comment. I just have a hard time replying to them because I'm like, if I reply to one, I have to reply to them all. So I'm trying to figure out how I can do that better. But it, right now it just gives me a little bit of anxiety because I'm like, I want to respond to everyone. So I can't just respond to one person. So I read all of them. I'm taking in your suggestions and I'm trying to create content based on what you guys are really interested in. So I really appreciate the feedback. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a, a thumbs up and let me know. And if you're not already, please do subscribe to my channel. I do post five times a week. So I'm here a lot. There's lots of good content coming out. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, P.S. Work hard and be kind, of course. Okay, see you guys next time.